Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. You know, it's not cliche. <laughs> it's not cliche. It's not trying to get you to just get your bubbles going. No. It means praise the Lord because Jesus Christ is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for bringing us to the last Sunday in the month of May. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Who could have helped us this far but you? Father, we give you all, all the praise. You are our testimony. You are our song. You are the reason why we live, we move, we breathe, we have our being. It is in you that life consists. You are the total envelope upon which our destiny hangs and rides. We love you. Thank you. You are the secret of the prevailing and the borderless church. You are the prevailing wind, the prevailing force, the prevailing guide, Aya, the prevailing power that is available unto us. God, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the express flow of your spirit. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for the backing up of your voice. Thank you for granting us meaning and impact in a very short time. Thank you for expansive growth. Thank you for bringing people from the four corners of the world to hear the message of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a privilege. What a privilege, Lord. Thank you for finding us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for calling us and thank you for choosing us. Oh, may your name be glorified forever. My Holy Spirit, you are the one who authors all words that we bring forth from this hallowed altar and this church. You are the one who has given us this inspired series on times and seasons. You have helped us in the first three parts. We are confident that you will bring a grand conclusion to the series today. Do this, O oh God, only to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, the grand conclusion for the month-long series, which we began at the beginning of the month, you know, the series is titled Times and Seasons. The grand conclusion for this particular topic today is, this is the part four, this is the part four, is the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. The clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. You know, at the very beginning of this month, for those of you who will recall, when we began this series on times and seasons, I brought an hourglass as a prop to show you and I zoomed in closer to the camera lens and I turned the hourglass upside down and you realize that when I did that, the contents of the hourglass, the powdery substance, began to drip. And I explained by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit at the beginning of this month that that hourglass that began to drip is an epitype or an illustration of how our lives are. The day a child is born, a baby is born out of the womb, as it begins to give out the cry, we begin to drip, we begin to drip, and literally time begins to go. And I said that to you back then that you cannot afford to waste time because that's not even possible. Time is superior. Time is a commodity that chooses. Time can waste you. <laughs> so it is better that you partner with time and work with it efficiently. Don't think you can waste time. No, time can waste us. That's actually the better and the more scriptural way to look at it. Yes, indeed. And the anchor text that will guide us in today's grand conclusion, part four of this ongoing series, Times and Seasons, but today's particular conclusion is the clock is ticking clock is ticking. The anchor verse of scripture that will guide us, the verse of scripture that will guide us here is Psalms 90 and verse 12. Psalms 90 and verse 12. So, teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. See what I said? You don't get to waste time. Time can waste you. So the only way to avoid time wasting a man or a woman <laughs> is to partner with time 
and work with it efficiently and effectively. Numbering your days and applying your hearts unto wisdom. It's a prayer. Lord, teach PBC, teach myself, teach my household, teach the church of Christ, teach the members of your church, oh God, to number their days so that they may apply their hearts unto wisdom. Oh God, if you understand this teaching today, it might set you free. So please pay close attention. Pay close attention. Even as God takes us through the grand conclusion on this teaching. You may have heard them saying that time is money. But permit me to say unto you today again that time is not money. Time is deeper than money. Time is not just money. I know you get so used to the constructs of hourly wages and whatnot. I get paid by the hour. I make XYZ bucks an hour. Lawyers charge by the hour. Consultants charge by the hour. And so on and so forth. But time is much more than money. You can lose money and recover money. God Almighty. Time is life. Time is not just money. Time is the currency of life. It is the commodity on this side of time. A child is born, the hourglass begins to drip. Time is much more than money. It's much more than money. It is extremely difficult to regain lost time. But you can invest in stocks today, lose some stock value, and then you regain it back. You can always regain money. You can always regain money easily. I tell you the truth. I have lost money. I have regained money. I have invested. I have lost. I have gained. I mean, net net, I come out positive by the grace of God. But you can always recover money. But with time, oh Lord, God help you. There are certain things that our grandparents cannot do that we can still do. It is important that you are wise to number your days and apply your heart unto wisdom. That's just the simple truth, people of God. Time is not just money. Time is life. It is not just money. Time is life. Except God shows you mercy. Only then can you maybe recover lost time. You know, um, some popular figure said one time that a wise way to think about life, and this was his own personal opinion. He says, imagine if I live until I'm 90 years old. 90 years old, 90. Now imagine if I lived until I was 90 years old. He said, my job, as I think about the effective management of my time, my job is to spend the first 30 years of my life acquiring all the education I can get. So you see, age zero to 30. All the education, the degrees, the certifications, all of the education you can get in terms of institution of higher learnings. Get all of the degrees between ages zero to 30. That's what this particular man said. And then between the ages 31 to 60, in other words, the next 30 years, the next phase of 30, he said his job is to earn as much as he can. So you see, the first phase of 30, learn educational, academic, institution-wise, all that you can learn. Of course, you know that learning does not stop when you leave school. In fact, learning really begins when you graduate from school. But he was saying, from an academic institution, you know, academia, zero to 30, bag all the degrees you want to bag, PhD, masters, double masters, bachelors, high school, diploma, whatever it is, GED, bag it up. The next 30 years, between 31 and 60, earn as much as you possibly can. Either through the salary, the wages, the job, the bonuses, the compensation, investments, and so on and so forth earn as much as you possibly can between ages 30 and 60 earn as three decades of earning power compounded yearly year out you will realize that by the time you're 60 years old you have amassed a multitude of millions yes and then he said between ages 61 and 90 spend it giving away as much of what you earned to the needy and to causes that are noble so now that's not a biblical quote unquote template so the 30 30 30 template is not in the bible but you know when i heard this man say that actually it got me thinking and i began to ponder and i began to say well, hold on a second there is a lot of sense in this model you know you know it's like learn earn give away learn earn and then be charitable 
it's a very it's a very noble model even though it's not necessarily in the bible word for word but there is some kingdom principles to it because the bible says that we should be diligent and we should go learn from the ant oh sluggard they do not have any i think that's in proverbs 6 6 holy spirit please help me i think it is in proverbs 6 and verse 6 you know proverbs 6 6 it says I'm speaking now as the Spirit of God gives me our trance. It says, Go to the ant, O sluggard, and learn from them. They do not have any ruler or any chief or any priest or any president, and yet they prepare for the winter while it is yet summer. Yeah, they prepare for the season ahead while it is yet summer. So you see, the ability to plan a life is important now you got to trust in the lord with all of your heart and with all of your soul and lean not on your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path that is in proverbs 3 and verse 5 i believe proverbs 3 and verse 5 trust in the lord it is good to plan but ensure that the counsel of the lord is already standing over your life there is nothing wrong with planning the bible in sets even the word of god says will you first build a house without first taking into cost the account nobody does that it is wise to always take inventory of what you have and how much you will require before you begin to build. But ensure that you are submitting all of your life's plans before God. So this 30-30-30 model on how to manage your clock is a good template. But ensure that God has verified and has validated it over your own particular life. Ultimately, it is the instructions of God that must count. For some of you, you will never be able to follow the 30-30-30 principle whereby you are learning for 30 years you are earning for 30 years and you're giving away everything for some of us you got to start giving away literally now you don't wait until you're 61 before you begin to give away money for some of us we're going to retire much earlier than when we're 60. of course i'm not going to be working for anybody at the age of 60. i don't intend to do that <laughs> by the special grace of god you know i'm going to be free working for my king loving on him doing his bidding wherever he sends me to go you know for some of you you're going to be called into full-time ministry at the age of 35 at the age of 40 at the age of 30 years old what do you say about that jesus christ did not leave the 30 30 30 model but yet his life had meaning and purpose and he was able to number his days and apply his heart unto wisdom so you see it's it's just a model that i saw that i thought was actually quite neat and interesting but it is not necessarily a model to follow as biblically centered you have to inquire from your maker and your creator what he wants you to do per time but having said that here is the biblical constructs the bible says in ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1 ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1 it says this remember now now this is the word of god to you and to me remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth remember the topic of today's grand conclusion is the clock is ticking tick tock tick tock the clock is ticking and the lord of god is telling us Remember now the Lord thy God and thy creator in the days of thy youth before the winter years come. Some manuscripts say before the evil years come. What are the evil years? What are the winter years? These are the years when a man says, I don't feel like doing anything anymore. If you actually read further down, if you read further down in verse 2 and verse 3, you will see what it means by the evil years, the winter years. When mm, there is no more zeal. Enthusiasm is at an all-time low. You don't feel like doing anything you know so before you get to that point remember now the lord thy god thy creator in the days of thy youth deploy your energy for god you are young you have energy you have vitality you have connections you have education you have access you have intel you have intelligence you have wi-fi you have data you have tickets you should deploy it for the kingdom agenda that's what God is charging you listening right now. The clock is ticking. Use this time to honor God. Deploy your life to Him. I promise you, your life will be a seed that you're going to harvest. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 27. It says, it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Serve God while you can. Serve God while you have energy. Bear your yoke in the youth. It is extremely key. These things are expedient. They're expedient unto us. It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 27. In your youth, bear the yoke 
of your calling and begin to do exploits for God. Jesus Christ began when he was a youth. John the Baptist began when he was a youth. Samuel began when he was even much earlier. He was a kid. He began his calling with God. Start early so that you can gain mileage with God. Our fathers in the faith began when they were young. Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboye, the general of the of this mission, and my father in the Lord, he began when he was in his 30s. In fact, he was named the general of the at the age of 39 in 1981. Begin while you have energy and vitality. While you can jump and you can move and you can run and you can just go and deploy all of your energy for God. I tell you, you would never regret it. It is a time worthwhile spending. John chapter 9 and verse 4, Jesus Christ says, I must walk the works of him that has called me and that has sent me while it is yet day. You see, the clock is ticking. Jesus understood this principle of numbering your days and applying your heart unto wisdom. It is now, now. There is nothing as good as now. Even God understands this and says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, Psalms 102 and verse 13, because the time to favor her is now. There is something called a now moment. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is now, 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 now. is a very important point. Now. Start now. Don't procrastinate your service to God, your love for God, your deployment for God, your heart for God. Sow your life as a seed. Spend and be spent for the king. In your youth, begin now. You will do much more valiantly through God. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16. Why should we do all of this? Because we should redeem the time. Because the days are evil. You have to understand that on this side of the divide, which is this earth, we're trying to play catch up. The enemy has had a long head start. So we've got to redeem the time. Because the days are evil. God is looking for servants and sons and daughters to deploy. The Lord is saying, I'm looking and I'm searching. I sought for a man who will stand in the gap. And by man, that is male or female. Of course, when we, when we say the word man in scripture, it is a by gender term. I sought for a man who will stand in the gap, who I will send. God is looking, looking, and the Bible says, oh, a heartbreaking thing. He says, but I found none. I pray in my generation and I pray in PDC, God will find available vessels in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who will go the whole way for him. Look at what God did last month. At the hangout with Jesus. See how much God transformed lives. He wants to do much more of that through you and with you. You know, honor God, remember Him, deploy. The good news is that there is a God who is able to restore time that you may have spent wasting away in iniquity. That God is called the God of restoration. Yes, I told you that it is almost impossible to recover time when you lose it. You can recover money easily. But time, it will take the mercy and the compassion and the intervention of God for you to recover it because God is able to restore. The reason why God is able to restore time is because God made time. God owns time. God ordains time. So he's able to restore because he has that sovereign privilege. I tell you the truth. And of course, the word of God will, will always be my anchor. The Bible says very clearly in the book of Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. Joel 2, 25, KJV. He says... And I will restore unto you the years that the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, you know, have stolen from you. My great army, which I have sent amongst you. God is able to restore you. So you may be saying on this current service right now, hey, I have wasted my life. I'm currently 60 years old. I don't think there's anything worth, you know, value that can come out of me. I am here to announce to you, anytime you accept Jesus Christ, your day has begun. Your day has begun. Your day has begun. The moment you give your life to Christ, your day has begun. If you are still alive, you are still in your day. The night has not yet come for you. If you are still alive, you are still in your day. So you can still walk the walk of Him that sent you while it is yet day. If your eyes are still open, it is still daylight for you. That's the truth. That's just the simple truth, precious one. If you receive Jesus Christ at the age of 70 and you live until you are 90 and you spend 20 years deploying your energy for God, you should consider yourself blessed. God will absolutely have regard unto your sacrifices. So it's not too late for you who is out there listening to us. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Permit me to invite you 
to Jesus. I cannot close this series. I cannot close this month. I cannot close this topic. I cannot close this service. I cannot close today's teaching and this message from the Most High God without inviting you to know Him, the owner of time, the author of time, the controller of time, the ordained time controller, and the one who can actually restore your time and your days again. His name is Jesus the Christ. He's able to help you. He's able to give your life meaning. Like I mentioned to you, the day you come to Jesus Christ, your day has begun. Your light has come. So just simply repeat after me if you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you may be joining us from, worshiping with us right now in today's service. Simply say this, Lord Jesus, I thank you for sending this message. I thank you because time is in your hands and my times are in your hands. Oh Lord God Almighty, I receive with meekness this engrafted word. I confess that I am a sinner and my ways have not been right with you. My life has not been in tandem with your keeping. I have been the boss of my own soul. It has not worked out for me. That's just the truth, Lord. Even though I seem to be comfortable financially, I have an emptiness in me that no one else can feel but you. I see the error of my ways now and I repent. I confess today that Jesus Christ is both Lord and Savior over my life. Come into my heart. Teach me how to live. Teach me how to walk. Teach me how to talk. Write my name in the book of life. Plant me in your custody and watch over me in your jealousy. Don't ever let me go again. Now let me begin to deploy my time more effectively and more efficiently for your business and for your bidding. I am saved and I believe this to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you said that simple prayer. Boom, right there. You are saved. Welcome to life. Welcome to your day. The season is upon you. Glory be to God forevermore. Now, fill in the link. Click that link that is right now in the chat box. And if you're following this in the aftermath, perhaps you're going to watch this in the replay. There will be a link in the description of this video. Click on that link. It will take you to a very quick short form on our website. It takes you about 30 seconds, literally just about 30 seconds to fill it out. We promise to keep your information confidential. We will bring you into an academy and a factory of discipleship where you can begin to grow with a bunch of other amazing believers who love Jesus across the world. God bless you. We love you. Remember, in two weeks, God's church, the prevailing and the borderless church, turns one year old. I am, <laughs> I am super excited about that, which God is about to do come June 11th. So mark your calendars, June 11th, it's going to be a grand worship celebration of our King. Glory be to God forevermore. Till then, stay rapturable and remember the clock is ticking. Tick tock. Tick tock. Tick.